So we will we want to talk today about the Earth's interior. What's inside the Earth? Before we start, we need to know some phenomena that happen to the waves, and one of these phenomena is the refraction, al inkisar. If there is a wave, and this wave moves in a certain medium, and it will go to another medium, like medium one and medium two, when it moves through the boundary between the two media, if they are different media, it suffers from a change in direction. So the wave changes its direction when it transfers or when it goes through the boundary in between the two layers. That's what we call refraction in Kisar. So if it has an angle at the beginning theta, it will have another angle phi which is different from theta. The refraction also happens to the seismic waves. When the seismic waves travel from one layer to another layer inside the Earth, it will change its speed and its direction, especially if the two layers have different composition, uh, uh, different density. Okay, so the change will be more and more. So the waves, the seismic waves, change the speed and the direction when they move through the Earth. This change in direction or this bending that happened to the wave is called the refraction of the wave. So the first person or the first seismologist who discovered this issue for the seismic waves was Morovicic. Morovicic, he was a, a seismologist. He studied the seismic waves and he discovered that the waves go through two layers in the earth. So they thought before that the layer, that the earth is one layer. Like 100 years ago, they thought the, the, the earth is only one layer and there is nothing uh, strange inside. What's inside is the same like what's outside. But Morovicic, he discovered after he noticed some reflections of the seismic waves, he knew that there are two layers. The first layer is the crust, and the second layer is what we call it now the mantle. So Morovicic, he discovered that there are two layers, and the boundary between the two layers, we call it the discontinuity. Discontinuity, عدم الاتصال. So he found the discontinuity that separates the crust and the mantle. And that was the first time to discover multiple layers inside the Earth by noticing the refraction of the seismic waves. So the discontinuity is the boundary between two layers of a material that have different densities. After Morovicic, many scientists discovered more layers inside the Earth. So Morovicic, he discovered, or they call it Mohu. So he discovered this discontinuity between upper part and the lower part. He called this one, and we know this one as the crust, and this one as the mantle. Okay, guys? After Morovicic, as you see in this picture, multiple seismologists discovered more layers in the Earth. Like here is the discontinuity. It's called repeated discontinuity. There is the Gothenburg discontinuity, there is the Lehman discontinuity, and so on. There is the Conrad discontinuity. He discovered also another layer. So there are multiple layers inside the Earth, uh, and these layers were discovered by studying the seismic waves. The motion of the seismic waves inside the Earth. Let's take an example for the core and how did they discover the core if we have an earthquake that happens at a certain place let's call it point a we knew last time that there are multiple kinds of seismic waves the p wave which comes first and then the s wave that comes next and then the 
surface wave that comes after that. And we knew that the time between the S wave and the P wave is called the lag time. The lag time. This lag time increases when the waves move uh, for longer distance. So we are going to talk about the P wave and the S wave. What's the difference between the P wave and S wave? P wave is faster. That's why it comes first. It moves faster than the S wave. Also, it can move through solids or liquids or gases also but there is no gas here so it moves through solids or liquids while the s wave can only move through solids if it goes through the liquid it stops it cannot continue through liquids both waves are mo are starting together at the same time uh, starting from the focus so let's assume that the focus is at point A, and let's study the S wave, which is this part, the S wave. The S wave will move normally inside the Earth and reaches to the stations everywhere that's distributed all over the world. As we said last time, if, we, if you remember, we said that uh, there are multiple stations multiple seismic stations uh, which are distributed uh, around the globe and they sense the earthquakes or the seismic waves and they are connected or communicating together through the satellites and the internet and we said one of them is here in Saudi Arabia so these waves will be sensed by stations yeah they all can sense the S wave but when you move further, okay, it takes more time and also the intensity of the wave decreases, okay, because it moves, it moves further, like it moves more distance, so the intensity of the wave decreases. So if the first station here, station number one, let's say it will measure something like this. Station number two, for example, here, it will measure something like this. So it will measure low intensity. Uh, what else? They found that if the focus, let's say it's at an angle zero degree, zero degree. And let's say the other side here is an angle 180 degree. And this is the center of the Earth. So they found that at an angle, 103 or in some text textbooks 105 all the stations after this angle don't sense the s wave and also on the other side of the earth all the stations after an angle 105 do not feel the s wave there is no s wave passing through these areas why is that because the S wave can move only through solids. It cannot move through liquids. So that means these waves that should be received in these areas, they couldn't continue because they passed through some liquid parts. So there should be a huge liquid part inside the Earth. And after studying earthquakes in different places like let's say the earthquake is here and the wave should move in this way also they find that this part of the earth do not have any s wave so that means this area looks like a sphere and this sphere is inside the earth and they called it the core of the earth and this core it must be a liquid core because it stops the S wave. Okay, guys? So that's how they knew that there is a liquid core inside the Earth. We receive the S wave starting from angle 0 up to angle 105. And from angle 0 to 105 on the other side. But after that, no secondary wave at all. So all of these waves were absorbed inside some core inside the earth 
and this core must be liquid core. So this is how they discovered the liquid core. And they called this area that has no secondary wave, they call it the S wave shadow zone. S wave shadow zone. So in this area, there is no S wave. What about the P wave? Let's see. When the earthquake starts at point A, that's also angle zero, and on the other side, it's angle 180, the waves move and everything is fine. It's received everywhere. Also, until it reaches the same angle, the same angle, 100, 0, 5, 5. Okay? After that, the stations do not feel it on both sides of the Earth. On both sides, they don't feel any P wave. But it's not going to continue to the end. After an angle, or when they reach to an angle, 145 degree, or in some textbooks, 143, and on the other side, the same, 145 degree, it returns back. The P wave returns back and any station in this area can sense the P wave again. So what's happening? We can sense it starting from 0 to 105 on both sides. And then there is an area from 105 to 145 between those two angles. If this is the center in this part, Okay, there is no P wave at all. And on the other side of the Earth, the same. The same angle also, and there is no P wave on the other side. So what's the problem? That means when the P wave move through the core, through this liquid core, let me draw it to you. When it goes through the core, the core has different composition, different density from the mantle. If this is the core and this is mantle, they have different properties, different densities. And the change is a big change. There is a big difference between the mantle and the core. So this wave will suffer from a big refraction. So it will change its direction like this inside the core then it will continue through the core until it reaches the boundary of the core again it needs to go outside it needs to go out of the core so it will suffer from a big refraction again so it will change its direction and it will continue until it reaches to this point let's call it point c if there is no core if there is no core, what will happen? This wave will move normally, normally until it reaches to this point and it will be sensed. Let's say this is point B. So without a core, without this liquid core of the Earth, it will reach to point B and it will be sensed normally. But because of the liquid core, different density, different composition, so this wave suffers from two big, two big refractions, and these refractions caused the wave to reach to a point here in this area, which is between 145 degree and 145 degree on the other side. There is an area here, we call it the shadow zone also. It's called the P wave shadow zone. P wave shadow zone. It starts from 105 degree up to 145 degree, this area. There is no P wave at all. So there is no S wave in this total area from 104 to 104, sorry, 105 to 105 on the other side. And for the P wave, 
from 105 to 145 on both sides of the Earth. Okay, guys? So, the S wave cannot continue because of the liquid core. The P wave cannot reach to the shadow zone because of the refraction. And this is how they discovered the liquid core. So, in the test, for example, I'll give you what. And there are some problems uh, in the homework about the same issue. I will say the earthquake happens here at point one. I have a station at point two and another station at point three, another station at point four, another station at point five. So I give you multiple stations, multiple seismic stations on the earth. Then I will give you some uh, seismograph chart. Let's say this one. This one. This one. And let's say something like that and I will call it call them a let's call them a b c and d and I will ask you to match the numbers the station locations to the seismograph charts. What do you think? Can you match them? So let's start by uh, seismograph number two. It matches which chart? Hmm. Number two matches. Okay, let's leave number two to the end. If there, uh, let's see number four. Hmm. Number four. It matches what? Okay, so we ensure that it matches B because there is no signal here. No signal. So there is no P wave and there is no S wave. That's right. What about number five? In number five, there is only P wave because in, in this area on the other side, there is no S wave here. Okay, because it's shadow zone for the S wave. So area number five or station number five, it senses P wave only, which is this one. So it's number D, okay, number D. What about two and three? Station two and station three. They feel P and S, they will sense P and S wave. I have two, look two charts here, A and C. Which one is A and which one is C? Two will be A, and three will be C. Why? Hmm? Look at the lag time. The lag time. Which one has more lag time? Number C has more lag time. That means number C is far away from the earthquake location. The earthquake location is at one. So station two is near to the earthquake, while station three is far from the earthquake. So when we move farther, when we move long distance or longer distance, the lag time will increase. So that's why three will take the, the longer lag time, which is number C. So you understand it now? So this is some kind of questions you might find in the exams or in the homework. There is a quick video. It shows us the motion of the P wave and S wave inside the Earth. Let's see the motion of the waves, the P and the S together. And we will see now that now there is an earthquake. So the P wave is the red one. And the blue one is the secondary wave, the S wave. As we see, the S wave stops at the core. It cannot penetrate through the core, while the P wave is subjected to refraction. So that's why there is a shadow zone here, P wave shadow zone on both sides, and there is a big shadow zone 
for the S wave. So now we need to know what is inside the Earth. We discussed this issue before two lectures ago, but let's say it again. The Earth starts with the upper part, which is the crust, al qishra The crust has two kinds, the continental crust or the oceanic crust. The continental crust is mainly granite, which we call granite, and the oceanic crust is mainly basalt or ahgar al-basalt, because it comes from the magma under the crust. Okay, so the magma turns into lava, building new crusts for the ocean, and these crusts are mainly basalt. The crust is the first layer. Then under the crust is part we call it the mantle. The mantle has several layers. The upper part of the mantle is very similar to the crust. It's solid and rigid. Both layers together form a lithosphere layer. We call it the lithosphere. And this lithosphere forms plates, the tectonic plates, which are different slabs distributed all over the Earth. There are seven big slabs and around ten small, uh, sorry, seven big plates. Let's call it plates. And uh, around ten small plates. One of the small plates is the Arabian plate. The Arabian plate. Uh, this layer is solid and rocky and made up of mainly silicates. Silicates are compounds that have silicon and oxygen together. Okay. Then after that, there are uh, the mantle layers. The mantle layers, there are multiple layers, as I show you here in the picture at the beginning. So all of these, all of these up to here. All of these are layers in the mantle. So the mantle has multiple layers. It starts by the next layer after the lithosphere, which we call it the asinosphere. Asinosphere is also rocky, but the rocks there uh, are different from the rocks of the lithosphere. These rocks are not rigid, okay? So they have some elasticity. They, these rocks also, or these layers, have some denser elements like calcium and aluminum, okay? But mainly also they are silicates. So they have silicon and oxygen plus some denser elements. The temperature is hundreds of degrees, okay? And in some places it might reach 2,000 or something like that. When we go deeper, we will find the core of the Earth. The core starts by a liquid part, which we call it the outer core. And then they discovered later that there is another part in the core, which is inside core or inner core, that's a solid part. So the core, at the beginning, we thought it's liquid. All of them is, all of the core is liquid. But now we know that it has two parts, outer part, which is the liquid, okay? And inner part, which is solid. And it's solid because of the very high pressure over this part. Okay, although it has very high temperature, up to 6,000 degree uh, Celsius, but also because of the very high pressure, it's uh, solid. It's mainly composed of iron, around 80% of iron, uh, nickel, around 5% of nickel, and there is like 15% of some other elements like silicon, like oxygen, like carbon, like nitrogen, uh, some heavy elements. Uh, oxygen, also we said oxygen, sulfur, okay, and so on. So this is briefly the layers of the earth. Okay, guys, so that's everything today. Thank you so much.